Okay. I will. Thomas is also leaving. Yeah. So now we're okay. So, uh, so the next uh, session is about web APIs using Python or accessing web APIs. And the uh, first thing that I was gonna ask is that, that what is a web server? Yeah, that's a good question. Do you have a, a succinct answer? Yes, because I was I was thinking about it yesterday and today, and and I I think I I think I have an an answer. So so server is a software that runs on a computer, and the the mission of the software is to uh, is to serve. So we can make requests to the server and it will respond according to the request. And this usually means that we, uh, we ask for some data and it will provide us with the data. Um, and confusingly, the computer that the software runs on is also called a server. And then, uh, and then, what makes a server a web server? It uh, it's uh, that the server is connected to the web, so it has a web address. So when mm. we ask ask uh, stuff from it, then uh, we ask it by sending the request for data to this web address. Uh, so URL. Uh, do, does this make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, in what situations, like, like, yeah. So, so if you think about it, uh, we are we are constantly like uh, doing these kinds of requests. I think uh, because we are we are updating the HackMD, for example, constantly, mm -hmm. and and somehow the information gets to us. So, so something in the background in the browser has to make constant requests uh, to the server uh, exactly to get this information to us so so now the the hackmd software is well is kind of the server and 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 also like every time we go to a web site the website is is a server or runs on a server and then we ask for it for the content of the website and we get the response so, as the website. So if we can use uh, a web browser to do this, why would we use Python? Like why, yes. why yeah, not exactly. just use web browser? Mm, so, so the idea would be similar to the earlier talk about scripts, that why would we use Python to get data from a server it's because like sh uh, can i actually i will scrap uh, i will grab the screen yeah sure yeah because i i think there was uh there was um does it show okay or yes i, I, I will i will make it a little bit like yeah this so so there was uh there was a um cuz here is like here is a web address mm -hmm. and i will copy it and then i will put it in the ad address bar and then we go there. So, so we can always do this when we want to make a request. We can put it in the web browser address bar, and it will give us the. Uh, we will look at the what what this means in a while. But, but then, if we want to collect data, uh, a lot of data, 
from different addresses, like for a long time, then we want to out do it automatically. We don't want to do it manually and, and copy paste the web addresses to the web browser address bar. So I think that's the that's the kind of the gist of it. We want to make make programs and we want to automatize things. Does this make sense or do, yes. do you have what so what would what kind of tools does Python provide for us to do this? So yeah, so so now when we are want to use Python, then uh, we we will use requests library, which is like the go-to library, and that that will uh, provide us with basically everything we need. Uh, there is one more term, and that is the API. So so what what is a web API? What what does it mean like in relation to the web server? Do you have a I, I think usually uh, when web APIs are talked about this, uh, they are a way of, of machine talking with the server instead of like a human who has to look at the web page. But mm -hmm. when you have an API, you usually, it's provided by the other side the server to, to allow machines efficient access to the data in the server. Yeah, I, I think that's that's like the correct answer. And, and the... <laughs> the unfortunate thing about it is that it's it's really abstract so so api is uh, is a machine interface with so so we will look at some apis now so um so i was thinking that maybe maybe we just take an api and we start making requests to it and let's see what we get in response so uh, there were some, okay, here we have retrieve data from API. And because we don't have any particular API in mind, there are some websites that gather like collections of APIs that we can use for developing and testing. So this was one one of the, websites and in there there was a cat fact api so we can ask for facts about cats so uh so uh if we go here uh i i checked it a second ago and this link didn't work for me but it should give you give us the information about the API. So, so what, what this means is that this is the web address of the server, I would say. And then af after that, you get the kind of the API specifications, which in this, uh, case is the fact API endpoint. So does the endpoint basically mean where our request should go? Yes. So 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 then when we add the at the end API endpoint API endpoint to the web server uh, address we get uh, the web server knows where to kind of root the request. So um, so when we do this from Python, let's let's send a request to this API from Python. I'll quickly and, note that if mm -hmm. you're doing this and you can do it at the same time, don't maybe hit the shift enter or something because we don't want to like DDoS the server, like uh, distribute a denial of service to anybody. Uh, uh, so if there's hundreds of people doing the request at the same time, I hope that the cat facts don't go down. Uh, yes, good. So, good so don't 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 be uh, 
don't be mean to them and 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 do a lot of requests just do once if you get one request that's uh that's a oh, one yeah. fact that's well enough yes good good very good point so i i would start with uh importing the requests library and then uh let's let's take the let's take the address or the url or the api and then in order to say to the server that that give me give me data we use the get function so we will we want to have a response and then we want to we use the get function to uh, ask for the data. So, so if I just now run it, let's see what happens. So, something in the response, probably. So, yes, something something happened. So, if we display the response. Well, what does this mean? It means that uh, the the response kind of code status code is two hundred, which in general means success. So everything starting with four would be an error, like four o four or. So, so now if we want to actually, we have the response object. And now if we want to actually see what's inside it, we can use the um, response content. And OK, now it seems like very much more like, like a cat fact. So uh, how would you interpret this? Well. Um... Based on what I know about Python, the B at the start means that it's a byte object. So it's mm -hmm. some sort of like bytes, but then it can still uh, print it as a as a string. So it's it's some sort of like a byte a string uh, that comes yeah. from. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a string, and to me it looks very much like JSON. Yeah. So it's kind it's a hash. Uh, and it has two fields, fact and length. And fact is a string, and length is uh, an integer. So, but but you're right. The B means that it's binary. So, in order to get it to a kind of like a nice non-binary format, we can use the built-in function JSON so that it decodes the binary format for us. And we can do it like this if everything goes. Let's see. Yes, and now it's very clean and nice. Yeah, and here we notice that like what what uh, Demo said that like they, uh, it was integer we could see that the length is integer even if like it was in a byte string because in json like you can you can have these kinds of like types already defined in the in the json itself so you don't need to have like a pipe or something specified uh, after each each value there so json itself like in this binary format it, it can contain all kinds of data inside of it and then once you interpret it as a JSON, you can turn them into Python integers and Python strings and whatever, Python dictionaries yes. and other stuff. Yes. So that's that's the like the very basic functioning of the request library. And then there is uh what do you think? Should we go to the exercises now or should we make another example request? Uh, with la with these parameters, I think one example request would yeah. be nice. Okay, because because this is uh, there is another example here, which is uh, the server is universities.hippolabs. Uh, 
www.ipsy.com and it has a search API endpoint. And we can give it uh, like to specify the search. Uh, in the cat facts, we didn't specify anything. We just wanted a, a fact. So it gave us a random fact. But now we can specify the, the query or the request further. So, and so we can give it a country with value Finland or Sweden or any. So let's see what happens. Again, we, should I scroll this a little bit? Maybe a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So let's get the response object again. Are there on other types of requests besides get requests that you could do, like in yes, inside Yes, because now now we are using get because we are asking for data, like send us data. But then there's, for example, uh, post, which means that we uh, that we have some data that we wish for the the server to receive. I think that's a one way to explain it. Mm. Or um, and there are a few of these verbs, but the uh, and it depends on what the kind of the API is meant to do that we can use this. Yeah, it's good to words. remember that like if you have a situation where you have something you want to store somewhere in a web server or if you're using all kinds of things you might or databases or whatever like you might end up using a request even if you're not like scraping or asking web like websites what they're doing if you want to like store your data somewhere you might use all kinds of apis for that yeah so uh about this about this uh url so if we break this down again, it would be here we would have the server. Uh, uh, server par part or portion, then we have the API endpoint. And then we have this question mark here, which means that after this question mark, we have parameters. So the parameter country has to be equal to Finland, I think that so and then when we send the request we should get a response and we can display the content oh that's we have a lot, a lot of stuff a lot of stuff so are, are there really so many universities in finland i guess so because country is finland everywhere so well, that's that's nice. So, so again, it looks like JSON. So it's a list of list of uh, uh, hashes or or dictionaries in Python, and each hash has uh, fields, country, the web domains, web pages, uh, yeah. the country code, and the name of the university. So, because it is JSON, we can actually. Okay, now it looks much. Yeah, much and it, nicer. It, and you, we can see that it converted it into really complex Python object where we have nested dicks, like we have a list of dictionaries that contain uh, strings, that contain lists, that contain lists, that contain strings, and all, all of this like really complicated stuff, and it's really nested structure which is very common in this uh re requests and this is where like having a format just such as json is really helpful because we can represent yeah. these kinds of like nested structures and now the now the if we go back to the if we go back to the uh the url or the web address mm. this this is about interesting about the web APIs that we can always give the parameters like this. We can always like manually write the uh, the URL. And 
it might be fine if we want to if we have like one parameter but then if we have let's say we have dozens of parameters then it becomes really uh, tedious to write the urls and also it becomes error prone in my opinion yes yeah especially if we have some special characters so how would we add a space there or like a ampersand or oh, some yes. chosen character yeah. like uh like uh like a slash like how did we represent the slash in the request i have no idea and i don't want to learn it <laughs> like yeah so i, I will to... i will clear the output for now and then uh luckily we have the the requests gives us uh a nicer way to format this and we can do it or maybe I will write it below. Hmm. So we just take the server address and then we give the parameters and we can give it as a dictionary. I think we need to have the API stand uh, endpoint there as well to search. Uh... Yep, good this yeah good it wouldn't have worked so and then we say that we are interested in Finland and now we make the request again and we make it to the API endpoint and I think it was params yes I think it is. Yes. So, and then it should be the same response as was here. So let's see. Everything looks okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. nothing, nothing will break if I, okay. Yes, mm. works fine. So we get all the universities in Finland. So the idea here is to that this is kind of a cleaner manner, less error prone, and the requests library takes care of, like you said, all the character. There are special special characters and those kind of issues. So we don't have to worry about those. Yeah, like like I was talking with Temu yesterday about this and like I've been mainly using like either, either the like some uh, like many APIs provide some sort of like click here to to get what data set you want or they provide like uh uh like you can just like hard code the url or what you want and and or you can use like something like curl to do it from the command line but like i i was a bit mind blown when i realized okay this is so easy to do in requests because like all of that stuff related to like either clicking through the APIs or uh, or use it, or writing these into the the URL is like it's such so much extra work that is completely unnecessary, and and I felt a bit stupid that I haven't used this uh, request that much more. Yeah, that, it's so that, so easy to fill that stuff in. Yes, and and also because it's in Python already, when you get the response, you're probably want you probably want to do some processing for it. So you're all kind of already in Python. So, and Python is a very good good uh, tool to, to start processing or analyzing the data. So it's kind of like nice that you can do the, the data collection all in Python and you don't have to switch environments or tools. So, uh, Th um, I think next would be some exercises and in exercises there are uh, a little bit more running requests or making requests and uh, a little bit of different kind of parameters called headers which are like meta parameters and then there was uh, a little bit of web scraping as well so requesting HTML instead of getting JSON. Mm -hmm. Yeah, headers, 
about headers quickly like headers are basically like if you if you think about when you log into your google account or something like you you log into your account and you go to a web page and you're they see that you're authenticated as something that's because like the request contained like a cookie or something that contained uh, your uh, basically the proof that you were you and then the web server decided to serve uh, the material that you were supposed to see so so these headers usually contain like authentication tokens and that kind of stuff that uh, that is like you don't want to put it into the URL bar basically you don't want to put your authentication token into the URL bar instead you want it to put it uh, as a side side thing with the overall request yeah yeah so uh let's take uh 10 minutes for the exercises and we'll be back in 55 right so five two so bye for now but okay we're live again so uh there were some really good discussion and questions in HackMD again. So uh, where should we start? Well, we can probably first start with the security question. So should you, uh, should you is it safe to get uh, data via web APIs and web and re requests? Yeah, I, I think that you, you just said it a minute ago. That was really <laughs> nice that uh how did you say it like that yeah like like my my first idea was that like if you're if you go to a web page like a random web page you have specified a url in uh are you willing to like click all of the links and and execute whatever they say uh like uh usually and, no and download, like, and download yeah. The, the yeah like usually you don't want to like download everything that the website says and it's I think it's similar with the web APIs because like like we said previously there we had a byte on the top of the JSON so it was a binary object so it could contain whatever executable code and stuff inside of it like it could have have been arbitrary code there Python code because it's a string and when the Python interprets it and the JSON interprets it it can like interpret it as a like remove, remove my hard drive or something like that I don't know. But, so but, yeah 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 that in in general we are when we are using apis we have some kind of like task at hand for example some some social scientist needs data from imager or and, and they have their own api so they make requests to imager that like can i have some data so it's kind of like you you trust the API source. Yes, and and in that that situation, it's important also to use the HTTPS, like similar to, to any other web page. If you don't have the S at the end of the URL and if you don't have the green lock in your browser, uh, it can mean that somebody can spoof the website. So if somebody manages to get hold of the domain for a second and they move the API, the request goes to like a, some attacker's API instead, uh, you wouldn't know it if you're using HTTPS, uh, sorry, HTTP. So with the secure uh, HTTPS, uh, you request will give you an error if the certificate that they provide doesn't match what they expect. So basically, if you're asking the wrong person uh, that you don't trust, so, so you should always use the secure layer if possible yeah yeah that's a very good point so always use https unless there is a very very good reason not to uh, another question in the hackam the or mentioned by enrico was about the ethics of of uh, mm -hmm. web scraping so you have done a lot of uh, web scraping demo yourself so what yes so have so, you encountered this there are uh, at least two points, uh, two important points about the ethics of of scraping, and that is first one is like like you said in the beginning that uh, don't make too many requests 
to the server uh, in a short time span, because this is basically a denial of service attack. So you are like suffocating the server server and they may crash if you like like attack it with too many requests in a short period of time. So usually when you make requests, it's like like take a five second or ten second break between requests. And that's so the server is kind of and also uh so that kind of stuff you need to think about when you're doing scraping. And then the other stuff is, or the another point is um, the actual data that you you gather or collect, that it, it might and it probably does contain some sensitive or personal information. So you have to be very uh, careful and you have to be you have to have uh, like a data management plan what to do with the data and how to store it and if you are allowed to distribute it at all uh, and this is this is a, a topic that for example Enrico is very good at and and knows a lot of so maybe this should be uh, uh, another topic for uh, uh, in this kind of course or another course. Yes. Yeah, also like in many cases, so you might, if you're creating a data set or something, you might, on like just using web scraping, you can include illegal material in the data set. So many machine learning data sets, for example, have been removed from the internet because the authors cannot be certain if the data sets contain like illegal material or something that is not uh, provided by copyright or or just like yeah it's a vile stuff that you can have in the internet so mm. uh, yeah you should be mindful of that uh, as well like you can internet is a big place and you can find all kinds of stuff in there so you should be careful when you're just doing web scraping. And, and as a so researcher, it's, um, yeah. we're almost, well, we're a bit out of time now. Are there any yeah. last yeah. words? This can be a whole uh, other topic. Yes. Uh, so uh, requests library, very useful. Uh, and then the requests documentation is very good. And then the web APIs, they are meant to be used. So they always have a documentation. So you can always go there and they probably even have some code examples how to get started. And, and in general, like whenever you do some request, remember that the data that comes from there is, is basically text or binary data, something like that. And how you interpret that is up to you. So you can use tools like beautiful soup to interpret it as a html file you can use uh you can read it as a json in in the, you can do all kinds of like stuff with the response like it depends on what the api provides you with and then you can convert it into whatever python object you want and then do analysis on it it might be like a tar file you might download like a binary zip or something like that and, and the response would be the binary file and then you can open it and see what's inside of it there's plenty of things that you might download via internet via requests yeah yeah okay sorry we went over time okay. again great <laughs> so we have a break for 10 minutes and then we resume with parallel as the last talk of the day so we'll keep answering questions by HackMD. So enjoy your break. Bye. Yes. Bye.